Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm with Inspire Ministries and I'm so glad that you are with me today. Today I thought that I would walk you through Colossians chapter 1. That we would just walk through this together. There are a couple things that I want you to see in just a couple chapters and I've got about six pages of notes. Now I'm praying that this isn't going to be a very long video but there is a lot that I could say about this chapter so I have condensed it a little bit for just the few verses that I'm going to talk to you about today. I would ask that you would go get your Bibles. If you have it handy, go get yourself something to drink. Meet me back here as we dive into the Word of God together. I have come to love the words of the Apostle Paul. If you have studied any amount of the New Testament, you've probably studied the life of Paul. You've probably studied things that he has written, words that he has said, and the great truths and the wisdom that he has left us with in 75% or more of the New Testament. And I love studying his life, and I love studying his ways. I like studying what he did, what he said, in in the pages of the letters that he wrote to us in the New Testament. And one of them that I've been walking through probably now for the last month or so is the book of Colossians. Now, I have been admittedly only on chapter one, but I want to share some of these great nuggets of wisdom that I have been able to extract from that book. Again, if you have your Bibles with you, I would like for you to turn it with me to the book of Colossians, chapter one, and we're just going to dive in together, and I want to talk through some of the things that I've been learning and some of the things that I've been studying in these great scriptures. One of the things that I want to say, first and foremost, is that Paul was an amazing man of God. This apostle Paul is one of the great men in the scriptures that we can learn a lot about. I ran across Colossians 1 when I was kind of reviewing prayer and looking at some of the patterns in prayer in the scriptures. And Paul gives us such a great example of being a prayer warrior for believers in the book of Colossians. One of the things that's very interesting to note about the book of Colossians is that he was writing to the church of whom he had never met. He had only heard about their faithfulness. He had only heard about their goodness and how they had come to know Christ and had been converted into Christianity. And he lays out for them what he is praying specifically for them for. And I love it so much because it gives us this great example of what it means, the importance of what it means to be a prayer warrior. I remember talking to somebody about a year ago and I said, the truth of the matter is that we don't have a lot of people, I believe, that are praying for our soul. I don't know about you, but I think about this a lot. Do you have people who are praying for your soul? Do you know that? Uh, I can attest to many people that I have praying for me, but I have often thought, are people praying for my soul? Are they praying that I will not fall away from the Lord? Are they praying for me to be spiritually strengthened? Are they praying for me to have knowledge and wisdom and to walk worthily of the Lord? Because that is precisely what we see the Apostle Paul praying for the people in the book of Colossians, and we're going to talk about it today. Again, I love Colossians chapter 1. Paul is, again, speaking to the church of whom he has never met, and he is giving his greeting to the converted believers, and he says these words found in chapter 1, verse 9. He says this out of the New Living Translation. So we have not stopped praying for you since we heard about you. Th this is important. Why is it important? Because he had only heard about them. He had never met them. He had never formed relationships with him. But because they were converted believers and because their faith was so important to him and spiritually growing was so important to him, he wanted them to know how faithfully he was praying for them since he heard about them. He goes on to say, we ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. 
oh man, the beauty that this represents for us here of a faithful servant of God praying boldly for the believers, the weak Christians who needed petitions whispered on their behalf for endurance and strength. And his focus, I love this, his focus is on praying for those whom he's never met, only heard about, that they would have complete knowledge of God's will, that they would have spiritual wisdom, and that they would have understanding. And the reason Paul is praying for these things is found in just the verse after it, and it's verse 10. And he says this, Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. And your lives will produce every good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. The New King James Version says it like this, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Paul wasn't praying that they would be filled with worthiness to seek out their potential purpose. That would be what the 21st century believer might tell you. He didn't pray for them to find peace and contentment in their spiritual journey. He didn't even pray for them to have a freedom from problems and pain. He prayed that the new believers would be filled with the knowledge of God's will, that they would be granted spiritual wisdom and understanding. And in receiving these things, they would be enabled to do three things. Number one, live lives that honor and please the Lord, that they would produce good fruit of every kind, and that they would grow as they get to know God better and better. Paul prays for their complete knowledge of God's will that is directly connected with practical walking. And this is according to verse 10 in the King James Version. And that the will of God by fruitfulness in good work, endurance, and gratitude. Verse 11 in the ESV says, Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. He prays that the believers in whom, again, he has never met would be filled with wisdom. And and what is wisdom? It is the knowledge of the true end of life, which is all sought in vain if it is sought after in any other way that is opposed to the will of God. Look at these passages which tell us what true wisdom is. Ecclesiastes 12.13 in the NIV says, Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. Job 28, 28 in the ESV says, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. And then in Proverbs 1, 7 in the NLT, it says, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. So from these verses, we gain a knowledge about what true wisdom is. It is fearing God. It is keeping his commands. Reverence and obedience is another way that we could say that. They hold the fountain of wisdom for the believers of Christ. Do you get that? We are to fear the Lord. We are to obey the Lord. And this is what true wisdom is. And by maintaining these two things, fear and obedience, we will live lives that please the Lord. We will bear good fruit. We will then, in essence, grow in Him. Proverbs 3, 13 through 17 in the ESV says this, Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than gain from silver and her profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are always pleasantness and her paths are peace. Proverbs 3, 18 out of the New Living Translation says, Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly. 
It has always been my prayer for everyone who either sits at the kitchen table, which is my Facebook online group that I run on Facebook, or for those who sit under my teaching here at Inspire Ministries, that we would find wisdom in the fear of the Lord and obedience to his will. And friend, that is my prayer for you today. There is an important question that I am constantly asking myself all of the time, and maybe it's one that you want to start adopting into your own life as well. And that is this, is the way that I'm walking worthy of my Jesus? Paul talks about the importance of this all throughout the New Testament, but again, we see this specifically in Colossians 1 verses 9 and 10. So back to that verse. In the New King James Version, it says this, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. In Ephesians 4.1, Paul teaches us this out of the New Living Translation. He says, therefore, I am a prisoner for serving the Lord. Beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Romans 16, 1 through 2 in the ESV says, I commend to you our sister Phoebe. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many and especially to me. In Philippians 1.27, we are told this in the NIV, Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come to see you or whether I only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Don't you love the heart of the Apostle Paul? He cared deeply for the souls of other people. And friend, if you are a believer in Christ, you should carry into your everyday life that same desire and that same passion for the souls of other people. I was just talking to somebody the other day and I was telling them it's never been more important to give this urgent message of the gospel to those that you love, those that you care about, and those whom you know are far from the Lord. I know that I am giving myself this same challenge to not only pray for those people, to not only pray for their salvation, to not only pray that their heart would be changed, to not only pray that they would begin to see from a heavenly divine perspective and be surrendered fully to the Lord, but that I would be used to demonstrate Him effectively for them in their life. And in order to do that, I must first walk worthy of the calling of God on my life. Take a look at 1 Thessalonians 2.12. Paul gives this exhortation in the New King James Version. He says that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. The Christ follower, the Jesus people, should walk in a manner that corresponds to what Christ did for them on the cross. I don't know if you ever think about this. Maybe you have thought about it from time to time. Maybe you think about it every Easter as Easter rolls around and we talk about the cross and the, the resurrection and what he did and the sacrifice. But it is something that I believe that we ought to pose to ourselves as a question every single day. Am I walking worthy of the Lord? That I am actually walking in a manner that corresponds to what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. We say that we have been bought with a price. We say this especially around the Easter season, and we certainly have. But by manner of how we enjoy this privilege and honor and how we repay the costly purchase matters the greatest deal. It will cost us nothing short of complete surrender. Nothing short of this should characterize the walk that corresponds with our obligations to Christ himself. What will it cost you to follow Jesus? 
It will cost you everything. Everything. And it begins with a desire to walk with him as worthily as we possibly can. Walking worthily pleases our Lord. The scriptures point to the fruit of our walking worthily, and it will be fully pleasing to him, according to verse 10. As Charles Spurgeon puts it, some live to please themselves or their wives, their neighbors, and some the devil. Our business is to please him whose servants we are. Hebrews 12, 14 also tells us to strive for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. And you're going to want to stick around on this channel if you want to go deeper into that verse because I have a great video coming up on breaking that verse down line for line, word for word, and you're going to want to stay tuned to that one coming up. Now look for a minute with me at the way that the King James Version reads for verse 10 out of Colossians 1. It says again this way, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Look at that phrase, very interesting phrase, unto all pleasing. One of my commentaries for this portion of scripture expresses that the rendering, the proper rendering for this should properly read, unto every anticipation of his will. Wow. I remember reading that for the first time in my commentary and saying, yes, that. Isn't that it? Not just knowing by head knowledge what it is that I'm supposed to do, but doing it so much so that we are doing it with the anticipation of what he desires most, knowing the heart of God, living so close to him that how he thinks becomes the way in which we think. This is about starting to make choices and starting to make decisions based on what brings him the most amount of joy. It's living out his will for our life. I think about this for a minute, and I just want to give you this practical example, me living as a teenager. Yeah. I was the only child and thus the only daughter of my parents living in the 80s long before there was anything like find a friend on a cellular device. My parents were not extremely strict, but they did have specific expectations of me. They expected me to be obedient. They expected me to be on time. They expected me to be respectful. And while I did have a curfew, and I was always pretty good about sticking to that curfew, it could be altered with one specific caveat, that they would know where I was, that they would know who I was with, and that they would know I was safe. So of course, given these ground rules, I knew what they were anticipating from me. And because of that, everywhere that I went with my friends, I always took the time to call my parents. I remember friends of mine would think it silly. They would think that maybe I had strict parents, that maybe they were making me do this. But I did it willingly because I respected my parents. I loved my parents. I wanted to honor my parents. And I wanted to do what they anticipated that I would do. It wasn't because, again, that they asked me to do it, but because I lived with the anticipation of what would please them, what would make them proud, what would keep me ultimately from punishment. And you and I are to do the same thing. You and I are to walk in a way that pleases him. Everything that we do, everything that we say should be done and should be said with that in mind. Does this please the Lord? Is what I am getting ready to say pleasing to him? Is what I'm getting ready to do pleasing to him? Is what I'm getting ready to engage in, is it pleasing to him? Is what I'm getting ready to post on social media making him proud? Is he pleased with me and does this bring him joy? 
It's what the Apostle Paul prayed that the believers at Colossae would be known for, pleasing him in everything, having great knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, practically having these things, and then walking in a manner that was worthy of the Lord. Not only doing what we are told, friend, but anticipating his commands by living in such close proximity to him that we instinctively know the right thing to do, but that we would do the thing ultimately that pleases the Father, that we would have his heart and his mind in our heart and mind as we make decisions, as we walk throughout our day, as we engage with other people, as we pray for other people, and as we share the gospel by being Jesus with skin on. And can I tell you this? Not only will it be the thing that pleases the Lord, it will be the thing that will rightly benefit us in our spiritual life. Friend, if this video has been helpful for you in any way, shape, or form, would you do me a couple favors? Would you give it a huge thumbs up in the box just down below? I would love to actually hear from you how these videos are being helpful for you. So if you could just drop me a line down below in the comment section down below, let me know what has benefited you and let me know how long you have been here with me. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you could do me another couple favors, just hit that subscribe button down below. Become a part of this growing family. If you haven't done so already, hit that notification down below to be notified for every time that I upload content just like this one in between now and my next video, friends. I pray that you have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye, friend.